What's up everyone, just as everything started to point towards the brothers, sisters, another gunshot went off. We've got so, so much to talk about, so welcome to your only murders in the building breakdown. What an episode, and I feel like we're saying that every single episode so far, but they continue to outdo themselves with every instalment of this season so far. I can already see why it's been renewed for season five, because this show is just, it's a masterpiece of acting and storytelling, and it's just wonderful on so many levels. But the episode opens to um, our writer of the Only Murders movie, Marshall P. Pope, and... On the first episode, I was kind of suspicious of him. I threw him in there as a suspect because everyone's a suspect at the start. But we got to find out more about him. He had a fake beard going on. He had a fake moustache and the glasses that he didn't need because he wanted to create a character for himself to establish himself as a writer. And I talked about last week how I feel like this season is a love letter to stunt people. And I'm starting to believe not just stunt people, but it's a love letter to movie making. And it's a love letter to every single person that goes into creating a movie and I even think when the motive is going to be revealed in the end for who who the killer was I think it's all going to rope into something to do with for the love of of movies and filmmaking and something that really ties deep with that industry and that area of things but we saw more about Marshall and all of a sudden eyebrows are raising although the eyebrows are real the the Only the beard and the moustache was fake. But the the eyebrows were definitely raising. And we were going, hmm, what's going on with this guy? Why is he faking all of this? But as the episode kind of went on and Marshall got to hang out with the gang and he almost seemed relieved that he was a suspect. He cares more about his writing than he does being found as a suspect. Is that an act? Very possible. Because I just talked about there how I think at the end of the season, I think the motive is going to tie deeply into just a love of filmmaking and writing and all that kind of jazz. So it could be an act. Personally, call me naive, but he seems like a nice guy. I'm not going to lie. I He seems friendly. He seems kind. He seemed lovable, likable, almost in a way felt sorry for him. He just seems like he wants to make his mark, his footprint almost. See what I did there on, um, on the movie world. And while I think that there is a footprint he's trying to make, I don't think it's the footprint that we are looking for because we're going to talk about that other footprint a little bit later in the video. But Marshall P. Pope, I'm going to throw this to the audience right now. Does anyone think he's guilty? Or are we are we ruling him out as innocent? I, I personally, I'm putting him in the innocent side right now. But, oh, yeah, okay. Do you know what? We're going to make a bold claim. I don't think it was Marshall P. Pope. P. Pope is making me laugh every single time I haven't, haven't to say that. They've all got odd names, haven't they? The Brothers and Sisters, Bev Mellon, Marshall P. Pope. Is this some kind of other... Uh, this is something I'm just coming up with right now while spitballing, but we talk about the cult on the West Tower that isn't a cult. Is there some kind of cult there with all these weird names? P. Pope, Mellon, the Brothers and Sisters? Uh, is there something going on there that we don't know about? One thing's for sure with this season, though, that every single time we think something is the case, it's flipped on its head and it's the absolute opposite. Um, So, yeah, but we're going to talk a bit more about what happened in the episode. Now, as Oliver's obsession with Loretta continues to grow, he finds out that the bicep in the Instagram picture that he found last week belongs to none other than Jack Jonk. This season is giving with the names. It is like... Jack Jonk. But anyways, Detective uh, Detective Williams was like, yeah, I, I know Jack Jonk. He used to be an ex, ex-athlete. You know, he's got big arms, big legs, and a big... And then they were stomped right before they got there. But this Jack Jonk, and then all of a sudden later in the... In the, in the um, I nearly said film. It, it feels like it's rolling like a movie this season, but uh, Bev Mellon, who turns out she wasn't even suspicious, I don't think. Maybe this show's just really good at making us think that somebody isn't the suspect, but she obviously held the gun at them at the start, but she didn't realise it was them. But I'm wondering why she was snooping around there in the first place. There's more than meets the eye there. Bev Mellon is more suspect than Marshall P. Pope, but I did say last week I don't think she's the killer because I don't think they put that out there, but now I'm second-guessing myself, which is how this show works so brilliantly. But I don't know. Bev Mellon said... She used it as a noun and a verb. Jack Jonk. (laughs) Jack Jonk. Jonked the junk of... It was something ridiculous like that. But basically, Oliver's worried that uh, Meryl Streep's 
Go and get junked. Now, my favourite part of the episode, and I don't know if anybody else is joining me here, but when we saw the hypothetical how the killer did it scene, where Steve Martin was dressed in a white tuxedo, and he had a, like a rose there on his on his blazer, and he, he took the shot, sipped a martini, then ran down the street, and then it was almost it was like James Bond. It was it was so cool. It reminded me a little bit of. This is an older one, and I know some of my older viewers will get this, but there's a movie called Dirty Rotten Scoundrels that Steve Martin starred in with with Michael Caine back in the day, and it almost reminded me a little bit of that in a weird way, but it was so cool. That was my favourite scene, uh, and we did him hypothetically. Running over to the apartment, bagging up the body, then taking the body downstairs, then putting it in the incinerator, causing the power surge, the lights come back on, and then that's how it happened in 12 minutes. And then they realised that... If somebody was to do that in 12 minutes, one person to do that in 12 minutes, they would have to be in peak physical condition. Could we be looking at a Jack Jonk type? Did Jack Jonk use his Jonk to help Jonk the, the to, to, to Jonk Saz off, then put then Jonk Saz into the body bag, then Jonk Saz into the incinerator, all while Jonking his Jack Jonk, and then he Jonked off back to LA? Jonk Jonk? Jonk? No, I don't think Jack Junk did it, but it was basically the point that if they were able to do that in that amount of time, they would have to be in seriously fit condition. So then as we got towards the end of the movie, I keep saying it's a movie, it really is rolling like a movie, which it means the producers are doing their job correctly and the writers, because this, it, it feels like such a special season, doesn't it? But as we got towards the end of the episode, we had this photo shoot. Of all the Olivers, all the Charles's, all of the Mabels. So we had, of course, our normal trio plus Eva Longoria, Zach Galifianakis, Eugene Levy, plus the two stunt doubles for Charles and Mabel. And then we had Ben Glenroy's stunt double, Glenn Stubbins. What? There's so many layers. Glenn Stubbins stepped in as Oliver's stunt double. And uh, they were there for a photo shoot. Now, just as they were there for that photo shoot, we. Um, we saw that Eva Longoria had these sticky pads that go on the floor and the trio wanted to use this, or Mabel wanted to use this as a way to figure out the footprint that was on the balcony out of the Dudenoff's apartment, out of the killer's nest. If any of the people on the show or who were working on the movie, their footprint matched with that. And it did. Because they lowered everything down. Because Bev Mellon had said at the beginning of the, the, beginning of the episode, she had said... I'm not the killer, I didn't kill Saz, but I do think somebody on the movie is. And that makes me still believe she's innocent, I really do. I think there's something more than meets the eye with Bev Mellon like, that we're going to find out. But she, if she wanted to get away with murder, I don't think she would have brought the investigation to the movie set. Actually saying, you know, I think there's somebody on, on, on my movie that, that killed Saz, or that had something to do with it. If she wanted to get away with it, she wouldn't bring attention to her movie. She would have just been like... She would have thought of something else, you know, or it would have pointed towards her. I genuinely believe that she is innocent. I do. But we found that the footprint belonged to none other than Tawny Brothers. We have been talking about this for weeks. There's that infamous screenshot from the trailer that's going around where we kind of just saw a 70s-esque suit with a sniper and they all... Oh, this is something as well I'm going to talk about quickly about that sniper, but... We thought it was her, and it was confirmed in that hypothetical idea, because Charles went up to Eugene Levy, and they were dancing backwards and forwards, trying to, you know, get past each other. Then all of a sudden, Charles went, oh, the thumping's working again. What if it wasn't one person who did it in 12 minutes, but it was two people? Tawny Brothers took the shot. Trina bags up the body, throws it in the incinerator. Bada bing, bada boom. It's a two-man job. Easily done. They're both young. They're both fit. They can get it done. And, uh... Then all of a sudden, yes, the boot did match Tawny Brothers. But we had a very, very odd ending. I will say before we talk about the ending and who got shot, I did notice when earlier they were in the top floor of the Arconia in the penthouse suite and there was a tall box. It looked like almost just something that would be a movie production box. The sniper was in that. I have no doubt in my mind. When they initially went upstairs, and my dog agrees because he's barking right now, when they went upstairs to the penthouse, Trina and Tony brothers were leaning over this box where it could easily just be scaffolding from a movie or it could be anything else that, you know, you could speculate, but it's the sniper. That's my money is on the sniper was in that box. And uh, that leads me on to the next bit. And we talk about 
who got shot. Now with that killer ending of the episode with the cliffhanger, a lot of people are starting to theorise who got shot because the screen obviously went off, we didn't get to see, but a gunshot was heard and then we heard Howard saying, oh my god, they've been shot. Who was it? I've seen so many theories already. I I mean, a one that a lot of people are talking about is the idea of that Tawny actually shot her sister. I, I mean, I'm trying to make sense in my head of how that would... What's the motive? The only thing I could really muster up was the idea that if she shoots her sister, then it ca- and then she can rush in and, and be like, oh my God, is my sister okay? Uh, if she did it discreetly, then maybe it can kind of take attention off her in the fact that it looks like she's just been playing innocent and, and, and people go, there's no way she would shoot her sister, but... I don't know. I There's something very weird about those two. Or maybe it was co-planned. I, 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 maybe the, maybe Trina knew about it. I mean, I almost feel like we're grasping at straws here at theorising who it could have been. It could have been a, a stunt double. It might be a way to kill off Glenn Stubbins so they don't have to keep paying Paul Rudd. <laughs> Huge fees to stay. Or we could speculate all day. But it's something, obviously, to do with the brothers' sisters. They caught their eyes on Tawny. And then, just like that, bada-bing, bada-boom, she was out of sight, and then a gunshot goes off. I'm looking at her, and so is Douglas, as he keeps on barking. He agrees with me because he is a smart hound. He is a wonderhound. He is Detective Douglas, and I agree with him. That is all of your Only Murders in the Building breakdown for today, folks. I thoroughly hope you all enjoyed watching. This season, for me, (coughs) is shaping up to be one of the best, if not the best, season so far. I absolutely love it. I am in love with it. It seems like just pure craft and love has been poured into this script and this story of magicalness. That was an absolute array of words that I just used there, but that's honestly how I feel about it. From Hollywood in the first episode to learning more about the Arconia in the next few and this mystery of Dudinoff plus the film that's going on and all the metaness with Paul Rudd coming back and Eva Longoria, Eugene Levy, Zach Galifianakis. I love it. I absolutely love it. I want to know if everybody else is enjoying this season as much as I am. How would y'all rank the seasons? That could be a... Yeah, that's question of the day, folks. Question of the week. How would you rank the seasons so far? For me, four is up there. But of course, we're only halfway through. They've got to stick the landing first before we actually get something solid to go, yeah, this was the best season ever. But as of right now, it's shaping up to be something remarkable. A masterpiece in movie making. And yes, I'm saying movie purposely because... I think this season has purposely been written to run like a movie and it feels like that and I absolutely adore it. But anyways, drop all your theories in the comment section below on who you think got shot. I'm just going to go with that random theory of it could be Trina and Tawny did it just to take the take the edge off them or to, to make it look like, oh my god, we're grieving right now. Or, or not grieving, but maybe it was, a, it was a planned gunshot that wouldn't kill her but would injure her and then she could go, oh no, my sister slash brother, are they okay? Oh yeah, she wouldn't kill her sister. She wouldn't shoot her sister. It's not her. When really? It was... Brother sisters all along shout out to Agatha all along but anyways thank you so so much everybody for watching don't forget to like share comment subscribe do all of that wonderful stuff but until your next only murders in the building breakdown i've been your host tom vasey good night